thank you for choosing the Kalefi Legio Mix Electronic Mixing Valve. This installation tip video will give you a general overview on what you need to know about installing your Legio Mix. The first thing that you'll notice when you open the box is going to be a complete set of installation instructions. Everything that you need to know will be in there, so be sure to read it. The Legio Mix comes complete with everything you need for your installation, with the exception of inlet check valves and a Modbus back net gateway. Those are separately ordered accessories. So let's go over what comes in the box. You'll notice that the actuator is already connected to the valve right in the box, but I would recommend removing the actuator to avoid damage to it while you're assembling the valve and installing it. So in order to remove that, you're going to pull on the little clip that holds the actuator to the valve body and just pull it straight up. Next you're going to have your valve tail pieces. These are going to be available in sweat or NPT along with your sealing washers. The sealing washers work in conjunction with the tail pieces and the unions on the valve body. So let's put those together. You're going to unthread your unions. The tail piece will slide directly into the union half. Sealing washer will go right in and then you thread it right onto the valve body and make sure to snug it up with a wrench. It doesn't have to be too tight but just make sure to get it good and snug. We'll do the other side as well. Again, you're going to have your sealing washer, your tail piece, and then the union. We're going to put it right together. Now that we've got our inlets connected up to the valve body, let's go over your mixed outlet. So this guy here, we've got an adapter fitting. This adapter fitting is going to have a temperature gauge built right into it, as well as a fitting for your mixed outlet sensor, which we'll go over in a bit. But from there, we're going to have the sealing washer. It's going to go right into the union on the valve body, and we're going to thread that right on. Now remember, too, on the smaller valve bodies, they do use O-rings instead of sealing washers, but that should be pretty self-explanatory. And the last thing we're going to do is the mixed outlet tailpiece. Again, a sealing washer and the tailpiece will go right into the union. We'll thread it right up. Now if you are installing the optional check valves that can be ordered separately, you're going to want to install them on the inlets, one on each side, in between the union from the tailpiece and the valve body itself. There's going to be a sealing washer that comes with each check valve, and the check valve will come pre-installed into the fitting. Next we've got our Legio Mix Control, which is ready to be mounted and wired using the supplied accessories. After that we've got our return and our mixed outlet temperature sensors that I'll show you how to wire up and mount in a bit. Now let's talk about installation, starting with the valve. First you're going to want to make sure that your piping system has been thoroughly flushed and is clean before you install a valve. This will prevent debris from getting into the valve and affecting its operation. Of course, I would recommend proper isolation valves and strainers to prevent future issues and allow for easier service. Now the valve can be mounted in any orientation with the exception of upside down, as dripping water can work its way into the actuator and cause damage. You're also going to want to be sure to observe these blue and red flow arrows on the valve body itself when piping up your hot and cold inlets. It is also very important to install a valve body according to the diagrams shown in the literature. If you do have recirculation, please be sure to check the piping in relation to any check valves and other components that we note in the diagrams. In order for the Legio Mix to work properly, you must always have similar pressures at the hot and cold inlets of the valve. This means you're going to want to avoid high pressure drops. I would also encourage you not to attach any auxiliary piping near the Legio Mix inlets. Water draw there can cause inlet pressure imbalances. Now that you do have the valve body installed, we're going to want to reattach the actuator. So again, like I had mentioned before, you're just going to slide it back right over the top and use the supplied clip to hold everything in place. Next we're going to be installing the mixed temperature sensor that's going to go in the adapter fitting down below. Now one thing to mention is that there's a mixed temperature sensor and a return temperature sensor and these are going to be different threads on them so make sure to use the correct one as they are labeled. So this sensor you'll notice here has an o-ring on it to make the seal and it's actually going to go into this port that's plugged off right here at the bottom of the adapter fitting. Okay. Now when you go to put that in there, make sure to just snug it down. It doesn't have to be overly tight and you do not need to use any pipe dope or Teflon tape. I would also caution you not to run the sensor wires together with high voltage wires because that could cause sensor reading errors. 
Now if you do have hot water recirculation, you're going to also want to use the recirculation temperature sensor. Again, these are labeled appropriately for which one goes where. This one, however, does not go into a wet well. We actually provide a sensor holder. It's going to be similar to a dry well. Now this sensor is going to thread into the holder and then this holder will be strapped down to the recirculation pipe with the provided zip tie. But before you do that, just make sure to use some of the heat conductive paste between the holder and the pipe that you're attaching it to. Now that the sensors are installed, we're going to move on to the Legio Mix controller. Now if you are going to be installing this in an area that requires all rigid conduit, you may need to put this Legio Mix controller in a separate enclosure. But next, on the bottom of the housing, there are going to be a number of knockouts, plugs, and cable glands. We also provide plenty of spare cable glands to use as needed. Now when it comes to mounting the Legio Mix Control, you can actually mount it directly onto separately sourced DIN rail, or we do provide a small piece of plastic DIN rail if you need it. From there, we also provide some mounting hardware, uh, some screws, and some drywall anchors as well. Now when you go to mount it, you're going to want to push the clips open on the back of the, the housing. From there, after you've mounted your small piece of DIN rail or your separately provided DIN rail, you're just gonna put it all in place and push the clips back in to hold it down. Now let's move on to the wiring of the Legio Mix control. To gain access to the inside of the control, you're gonna depress the small button on the right side of the outer cover, and then you're gonna loosen up the screw that holds the board to the housing, and then you'll notice that it hinges right open. The control does require 24 volts AC, so I would recommend a dedicated transformer to power the control and an on-off switch nearby for easy service. Now, I will mention that the literature does have illustrations and details on how to route all the wiring inside of the housing and where to make each connection on the terminal blocks inside, so make sure to follow those carefully. You'll also notice that included with all of your components of the Legio Mix control are the terminal blocks. You'll notice that these terminal blocks can be or they are removed from the actual control. This makes for ease of wiring and when you're done you just plug them right in. Now before you power up the control you're going to need to enable the battery. You'll notice that it's at the very bottom of the circuit board inside and just below it there is going to be a small dip switch. And as just a reminder, on the inside of the control housing, there is going to be a nice brightly colored yellow label to remind you that you do need to do this. So now that you've got everything wired, you've got the battery enabled, we're going to close up that cover, tighten down the screw, and we're ready to turn on the power. The controller will now go through a startup routine, and this is where you're going to set your date, your time, and your location. After that, you'll press menu, and you'll see your default screen. You're going to verify the temperatures are reading correctly from your mixed and return water temperatures. From there, you're going to want to go into the menu to change over your mixed outlet temperature settings, and then your installation is going to be complete. I hope you found these tips useful. If you have any further questions, please be sure to contact your wholesaler, your rep, or us directly. And thanks for watching.